Well, hello. So recently I did a math video where I showed you flip throughs of three math curriculums. I don't think I did it just justice judging from, a, I got like three thumbs down. So I was like, let me go back and see if I can do it justice. So today I'm gonna to show you a sample lesson from each. First, the product of the day, which is this super cool kindergarten game that I don't have right now, it's at my grandma's house. Preschool or kindergarten called Found It. So all you do is sit there and pull out a card and the card says, find something you use to write with. And then your kids run off and find something they use to write with and bring it back to you. And you're like, good, next one, okay. You know, find something, find something that you wear in your head. Find something that's yellow. Find something that you use outdoors. Find something that smells good. Okay, so I, it's just my kids love it. All right, so let's start, let's get to it. So the first I'm gonna show you is the Good and the Beautiful, which of course is good and beautiful. It is, it retails for free if you print it off, but this box here is $25. And see what comes in this box. You got some counting sticks, these little guys, and this. So let's start with the car. This is an actual lesson, lesson five. I like that it's only two pages. The lessons are usually one or two pages. So practice what the child has not mastered. So count to 15 and identify the numbers below. One, three, five, four, two. Now today, this is what we say. Today we're gonna practice position words. So put the car under the table, put the car behind your back, put the car in front of your forehead, put it above your head and put it between you and me. So this is what we have them do. Okay, so they get to choose a car. Now we read to the child, you get to drive this car on the next page. Follow my instructions. Place the car on start. Oops. Oops, hold on, something under there. Supplies from my other math curriculum. On start, go over bridge number two. Go over bridge number three. Back up and go over bridge number three and bridge number four. Turn around and go over bridge number four and bridge number two. Go over bridge number five, back up and then drive on the grass and around the pond. Drive across the river, park next to a tree, park on the bridge. Now it doesn't explain to me why we're doing this. Okay, but that's fine. Read to the child. In the next column, trace the numbers that I tell you to trace. Trace between the three, trace the three between the butterfly and the frog. But even though they don't tell me why, I mean, that's good information to learn, right? And then, so trace the four besides the yellow flower, trace the four besides the frog, trace the five next to the frog, trace the five below the butterfly, trace the two above the frog, and one moment, almost done. Trace the three above the butterfly, trace the one beside the butterfly. Okay, so let's look through this kindergarten curriculum. So as you'll see, it teaches you how to draw the numbers, which I like. This is lesson six. It does a short review, identify the shapes and the colors below. So it reads to you a lot. This is, make sure each graph has three carrots. They do have a bit of a story about that. So now this is spiral, right? That's what you learn in school. So you learn a bit of this topic and then you jump to a new topic. Like here we're writing letters. So it's not concentrated, six, 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 seven, six, seven. And then over here it's pairs. So now you're learning about pairs. So now we're doing numbers eight and nine. So it's very, I mean, it's very, it's not boring and the lessons get longer as you go through it. So spatial reasoning activity, have the child recreate the following designs using items from the box. All right, so it is very, I mean, it's good and it's beautiful. It's just not my preferred type of learning, of teaching. It's not my preferred type of teaching, but I like that it's only one book. There's no teacher's manual. So it's just all in line here, right? So you read the black, you read the black, you read the black. So I like that. Now, again, you've seen what comes in the box. Cubes to do the addition and the minus. You could play some fun games with that, it looks like. Some of theirs, because they got some of these, because you got some games in there, counting sticks, and the cars. Okay, so that's what comes in this one. Now let's talk about, this is the curriculum I'm currently using. This is not workbook based. I'm gonna to go to a lesson that we have done today. Okay, so let me just show you. Okay, so this is the teacher's manual for math with confidence. So we are learning number six is the focus today. So every day is in the kindergarten one is a different, this is week three, number six through nine. So today is, let's see, we're gonna take the 10 frame out, comes in the book, put the 10 frame down, and then we're gonna put some counters and it says, and we're gonna cover the counters with the paper. 
It says, I'm gonna show you some counters for a second. When I lift the paper, tell me how, how many counters there are as fast as you can. Lift the paper just for a second and see how many counters, three. So then repeat it with zero, one, two, three, four, and five in random order. So this is teaching sublimation, which is helping them to count very efficiently large quantities of numbers. Now activity count to six. You've already learned that the number's from zero to five. Today you're gonna learn about the number that is one more than five, number six. So scatter six counters on the table. One way to tell how many counters there are is to count them. Demonstrate by slowly and deliberately pointing each counter's count. One, two, three, four, five, six. There are six counters. Have your child count the counters on her own as well. How many counters are there? Six. Then gather up the counters and add a few more counters to the pile. Or place the counters back in the storage container and give your child the entire container of counters. Can you count out six of the counters? Then they'll count out six. Can you clap your hands six times? They count, they clap six times. So now these boxes right here tell you why you're doing what you're doing. So both types of tasks are included in this lesson and lessons 3.2, 3.3, and 3.4 so that your child can practice both types of skill. All right, now you're gonna need an egg carton. Show your child an egg carton. Can you find a group of six in this carton? So one row holds six, right? The activity, six is five and more. Scatter six counters on the table. Another way to tell how many counters there are is to organize them. Can you make a group of five counters on the paper? So he pushes five together, and then we got one left. All right, so that's what you're working on. That means there are six. I see a group of five, which is sublimation, plus one more, that means there are six. Okay, now a 10 frame is another way to organize counters. Place six counters on the 10 frame, filling every box from right to left. The dark line separates the counters of a group of five, plus one more. Once there, now this is another gray box, right? Once there are more than five objects, our brains need them organized in some way for us to recognize the quantity. See, and says, see week three for more details on how to organize them for your child. All right, can your hand show me five fingers on one hand and one finger on the other? How many are you holding up? Now we're going back to, because we also learned money. Show your child six pennies, have your child Group five of the pennies. You learned that a nickel is five cents, so we can trade five of these pennies for a nickel. Okay, so how much are a nickel and penny worth together? And then you do work page nine. Let's go in here. Our books get a little beat up as we use them. I don't know if anyone else's books are like these. So today you just do six, so it's one page. So circle the groups of six and X out the other groups. Circle the groups of six, X out the other groups. So here we just did a line through them. That's fine, I'm not gonna be that picky. Okay, so there you go. So now you've seen two lessons from that. Now, this starts grade one. This is mastery based on, some would say the most successful math curriculums in the world. Um, it's, like math, it's like Singapore math which Singapore math is, has recreated an American version. I'll put it on the screen, I saw it the other day. So this is, this doesn't start till grade one, but before you start it, these are the things they need to know. In case that's, so I almost would consider doing this if you wanted to jump here. Now the benefit of doing this curriculum is that there is no prep. Make two groups, two and two, three and one three and two, two and three, one and four. So this is mastery. So you stay on one topic until you are done learning that specific topic, until you get it. This is spiral, which means it teaches a bit of this, then a bit of this, then back to that, then a bit more, then a back to that. That's why it looks like it's all different. It's not as organized. It doesn't look as organized as this. It's not to mean it's not organized, it's organized in a spiral way. This is both. That is both mastery and spiral, spiral, mastery. Okay, now we're on here. Draw as many dots as the number shows. Divide them into two groups. All right. So you get it, so it's no prep. We're going through it, so I had my son, when he was doing it, it was like a page a day. You had to do a page a day, we want year round. He did a page a day. Cause he did it, I mean, he was six when he started it, five or six. So. There you go, but again, to prep it, you are going to need, they're going to need to know 
how to count, they're gonna need to know how to draw numbers. So count and draw numbers. If your child cannot count or cannot draw numbers, what I had my son do was do dots for the answer. Just do dots. It's easier to use a marker or a pen, but do dots for the answer until his mind was able to help him write numbers. Or you fill in the answers for them. And here is more information if you need more information on Math Mammoth for different things to learn to help you teach the curriculum. But you don't have to use them. I've never had to use them. All right, there you go. I hope that helps. Please like the five. Yes. And, and hit the bell for notifications.